This video is going to explain the FinDebt report. The FinDebt report is a cash account detail report and it contains all the transactions that make up the amounts and the cash accounts that you have access to. So for in my example here, the Drama Club Advisor has access to a FinDebt report. So when I click on this link, it's going to pull up the FinDebt report in PDF format. So the first thing I'm going to notice is the date range on the report. It's showing me that the report's from July 1st through the current day. So this is telling me that all the transactions that I'm going to see will be within this date range. So the next thing I'm going to look for is the actual cash account that I have access to, and that would be the drama fund. And when I look way off to the right-hand side, I'm going to see the fund balance of 16229.12. That is the balance of the account at the beginning of the fiscal year, July 1st. So I had 16229.12 in this account at the beginning of the year. And then from here then, I am going to look at all the transactions that make up the amounts in this account. My first transaction is a receipt transaction. And the reason I know that is because the 79 cents is in the receipt column. So from there, I'm going back to the left margin here and reading this report left to right. So my first transaction then was on July 31st. So here is the actual receipt number that was recorded. And then from here, the description. To kind of help me out with each of these columns, I can go up here and refer to these column headers. Um, for this one in particular, a receipt doesn't have a vendor. So I know that the information on here is the description information of that receipt item which is July interest drama. So from there then, it's going to display the revenue account that's tied to this receipt transaction. And then from here, the 79 cents. And then what my current fund balance was at that time. So if I take the 16 to 29.12 plus 79 cents, my new fund balance at that time was 16 to 29.91. From there, I move on to the next transaction, and I know it's an expenditure because the $999 is recorded under the expenditure column. So again, I read left to right. Date of the transaction was August 29th, and the 59715 is the check number. And then here's the PO number tied to that check. A vendor is involved with an expenditure, so it's going to give me the vendor name, and if there's enough room, the description of that PO item, the budget account that's tied to this transaction, the $999, and then my balance. So if I take $16,229.91 minus $999, my new fund balance at that time is $15,230.91. And then I move ahead with my next transaction, which I know is a receipt transaction. And again, I read left to right, so on and so forth. So I go through all of the transactions here that have been processed. And at the end then, it's going to give me a total of revenue amounts and expenditure amounts against this cash account. So for the fiscal year so far, um, I have receded in $8,274.09 into this cash account. And so far, $3,349.91 has been expended. So if I take my current fund balance at the beginning of the fiscal year, the 16 to 12 plus what I receded in so far this year, minus what has been expended so far this year, the current fund balance against this cash account is $21,153.30. Now, if I also have a fin sum report, I'm going to see the same amount underneath the current fund balance in that report as well. Another amount that may be included on your report is any outstanding encumbered amounts. This may be of a detailed account of it, or it may be more of a summarized account like this one, total outstanding and encumbered amounts. So this $2,250. $56 
are encumbrances that are still outstanding for this particular cash account. So if I take the $21,153.30 minus $2,256, my remaining fund balance for this cash account is $18,897.30. So again, if I were to compare this with a FinSum report, that remaining fund balance on the FinSum would be the same total.